So, Terry and Caroline own property together. Okay, and how long have you been in, in business together, Terry? Five minutes. Okay, so they've, they've been in business together for the last 50 years. They, they, they went to school together, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, and how many properties do you own together, Caroline? Um, 30. Okay, so they've got 300 properties that they own together. Okay, and what's the value of each property? 150. Okay, 100,000 he says, good man. So Laura, sorry to bug you, 100,000 times 300 properties, what's the value of the estate? Three million. Three million, okay, good. And uh, just, uh, I'm just going with the, I'm going with the, I'm going with whatever figure uh, Laura says, but you're right, it is 30 million. It's 30 million. I just want to be nice to her, by the way. Okay, so 30 million, okay. And that's over a, a 50 year period. How, how much are those properties worth collectively today, Terry? How much are those properties worth today? So you paid 30 million for them, 100 grand each, when you bought them over the last 50 years. How much are they worth now? 150 million. So you've got tax to pay on 120 million. How much tax would you pay on 120 million? A shed load. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 28% by the way, okay? Okay, so that's gonna be, let's, let's just call it 30, 35 million, okay? That's how much tax you would pay. It's not the exact number, but I've just made it up, okay? Yeah, so, okay? Now, when Caroline and Terry went into partnership 50 years ago, it was common and obvious to have a partnership. And now they've, they've got to a situation where they're high rate taxpayers, they want to incorporate their property portfolio because section 24 affects them. If they incorporate their property portfolio, are they going to pay capital gains tax, do you think? So they would have to, they would have to, uh, because they're selling their properties to a limited company. But you've got something called section 162, incorporation relief. 162 incorporation relief which basically says if you own a property business you do not pay capital gains tax okay any business by the way but if you have a business you don't pay uh, capital gains tax when you move your business from an unincorporated body i.e. sold to a partnership to a limited company Terry and Caroline clearly have a property business significant size property business, therefore they're not gonna pay any capital gains tax, so that helps them there. Are they going to pay SDLT? Sunil. Uh, uh, relief, multiple million. They could do. What if that, okay, they work that out, and that comes out at 3,000 pounds per property, okay? So they're saying that's, so M, we call it MDR, 3K per property, they don't like that idea. Anything else they could do? Sharmila, do you remember by any chance? You might not, and it's the end of the day for you. So, because it's a partnership that owns property and has done over a number of years, under the Finance Act 2004, I think it is, no SDLT to pay when a partnership incorporates. Either or. So, Terry and Caroline had now moved their properties from their own names, i.e. a partnership, into a limited company. So, Terry, your properties are worth 150 million, yeah? So we now have a company here. What's the value of the assets in that company? Yeah, just wanted to be sure. And you got 300 properties. And we're going to just make this up now. And 12 months later, you find 300 people who want to buy one property each 
from UK for 150 million, yeah? So that's gonna be uh, 500 grand each, isn't it? I think. So you've got 300 people who buy the public for 500 grand each. So you've made 150 million. So you've sold properties for 150. How much tax are you gonna pay? Because remember, you bought the properties for 30 million quid. So are you gonna pay the tax, Kerry, on 30 million, 150 less 30, yeah? Yeah. Why is that? You only paid 30 million, didn't you? Why would it be on 150? Because Terry says it's 150 because that's the value of the properties when they were moved into a limited company. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. So the big benefit of incorporating, in my view, isn't section 24, it's the uplift in the base cost that you get when you move the properties from your own names into a limited company. Because that, that could be significant. I mean, that was just an over-egged example. But let's say, Sunil, you've owned the properties for 8, 10, 12 years, you might have gains of three, four, five million. Well, if you want to incorporate, you move that gain into the balance sheet over here. And if you sell the properties individually, not the shares of the company, okay, sell the properties individually, you're gonna pay minimal to no capital gains tax the quicker that you sell them once they're moved into a company. The longer you keep them in a company, the bigger the gain, but you're still not gonna pay the entire CGT from the day you bought them, you're going to pay from this amount onwards. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a big benefit of incorporating. Mm -hmm. Section 24, in my, in my view, is just a byproduct. Yeah. The longer you own the properties for, the bigger the benefit. A uh, Kalal and a Nehal. Yeah. So, but you can't do that with residential property. You can't move the residential into an LTD. You can. You can. This is, this is, this is what you two have done. Yeah. But to benefit, Caroline, to benefit, uh, you've got to have a business. So if you've got one property, it's not going to work. If you've got five, six or more, yeah. it's going to work, Doesn't okay? Because you've got to spend 20 hours uh, working in your business every single week okay. for this to qualify, okay? Shan, if you, like, we've got two properties in a company, but, and we've got three properties, including our principal primary residence. Yes. Now, the, the two buy-to-lets in the principal primary residence, we want to move into the partnership. But at that point, I guess we need to leave our house, right? We can't stay in our house and put that in the partnership, can we? Or can we? You can do. We can do. Yeah. Okay. So are, you going to, are you going to buy a new home for yourself? Yeah, something later on. We're going to have to move out the area. So yeah. um, <coughs> it's not, there's no minimum, because you said four or five, five or six. Five properties. or more, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is three. Can you turn one to an uh, HMO? They're, yeah, they're going to become, yeah, one is going to become a HMO. It's going to become, yeah. Yeah, the one that we, our house, is going to become a HMO. Yeah. And the other two are vital let. And actually, one could be serviced accommodation and one's a vital let. Okay. Yeah. And how many rooms will the HMO have? The HMO will have five. So that's five different units. Right. Plus your sixth by the single let. So you've got six there already. Oh, is that how you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we're still living there, though, so we're not, you know, it's not a HMO while we're in there. Yeah. So, so whilst we're in there, it'd be one by to let one service. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. No. So we have to do this after we've left. Yeah, but remember, if you buy a property and then have it, and it's owned by a limited company and you live in it, you've got to pay something called annual tax on yeah, envelope. Yeah. So you don't, you don't live in it. Yeah. So we need Which to we'll cover tomorrow as well. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So the big benefit is uplift in base cost, sell those properties individually, especially if you've got bigger portfolios, and you minimize tax. The drawback is that the money is stuck in the company, so you can't take it out personally, Caroline, but you, you, you've got it all stuck wherever the company is, somewhere over here, stuck in here, but at least you can use those funds to invest elsewhere or do something else, or draw down on those funds over the next three to five years by using your tax allowances, yeah? But if you've got one, two, three, four properties, it's not gonna work, because you'll have to pay both SDLT and uh, capital gains tax.
Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, by the way, make sure you click like, subscribe and post a comment uh, because that tells me that you're engaging and you're finding the content useful. And if you like this video, make sure you check out this video here because it's the next stage in terms of your learning and development.